Never do these things when you're building a house. Never put a front entry garage if you can prevent it, if you can keep from it. Listen, the reason why so many homes are built with front entry garages is because the developer has cut the lot, it's a narrower lot. You want to make sure that there's no front entry garage. If you have a front entry garage, it's not the kiss of death, don't get me wrong, but if you're going to build a house, you want to, if all possible, put it on the side of the house. So you put two windows on the front and you put the side entry garage. You got a little bit wider lot. That way you're not on display. Don't do a front entry garage if you can help it. Another thing you want to avoid not to do when you're building a house is to keep the ceilings at eight foot. Do not do eight foot ceilings. And I know people talk about utility costs, but if you build the house correctly and you build the house right, it'll be insulated well enough and it won't cost you any more in your utilities. If, if anything, it'd be maybe a little bit more, but trust me, it's well worth it. When you put eight foot ceilings in a house, it kind of dates it because no one does eight foot ceilings anymore, right? If you put eight foot ceilings in the house, it also makes the home feel small especially if it's a smaller home. So when in doubt, don't do eight foot ceilings. Now kind of jumping back over to the garage. You have a garage, you put that on the side, right? Side into your garage. Also, you want to put what they call a pedestrian door. The pedestrian door is just a standard door right beside your garage door. So you have a garage door, you have a pedestrian door. This way you can go through the side of your garage. You don't have to walk through your front door. Most importantly, if you're in the house, you can go in and out of your garage without having to raise and close that garage door each time. Now, another thing you you want to avoid doing and and this is really important that you listen up on this one you don't want to go cheap on this and that's windows when you put windows in the house you want to look at a mid-grade window middle of the road you want to look at a double pane window that's a vinyl window don't put aluminum windows they can be double pane but they're aluminum they're a, just an awful they're, they're a conductor if you will if you ask me of a letting hot air in and cold air in so you want to do a, a double pane aluminum window if all possible if you don't do that it's going to cost two things it's going to cost you money on your utility bills by putting in cheaper windows. You put in better windows, it's going to save you money. It's also going to save you in terms of the durability of that window because the window is less likely to fall. If you install a good window in your house, you're less likely to have that because the warranty is going to be higher. It's going to be a better product and I promise you, you'll thank me in the end. Another mistake that I see people make when they build a house is putting in just one vanity sink. In other words, one sink in the main bedroom. So you have a main bedroom and then you have one sink in the middle and you have five to six foot of vanity. I don't care if you're a single person, you absolutely do not want to do that. If you're going to build a house, you want to make sure you put double vanities. When they're doing that and they're plumbing the property and they're in the process of the cost of that is so minuscule, but it helps you in the end. I always look at resale, resale, resale. I don't care if you think it's going to be your forever home. Life happens. When in doubt, do the double sinks in your main bathroom. Which leads me to, if you have space, it's important to take the commode and separate it from the rest of the bathroom. They call it the water closet. So you're taking the commode and actually enclosing it in and that way there's a door that swings open and that way you can have your privacy from your partner. It just aesthetically looks better because you have a door closed and now you see a tub and a shower or a tub shower combo with the double vanities and you're not staring at a commode. Which also reminds me, do not build a house without a bathtub. You may think, I'm not a tub person, I never take baths. Listen, when you build a home, you have to consider you're building it not just for yourself, but for others. You have to think resale. You have to think, what's the best way this thing's gonna sell? Who likes this most? Some people have children. Some people say, well, I'm never having kids. Why do I need to worry about that? Or I don't like to take a bath. Why do I need to worry about that? It has nothing to do with you. As crazy it may sound, you're building a house for yourself, right? But when you build a home, you want to make sure that you do the things that you're going to enjoy now and that another person will enjoy just as much to make sure the desirability of your home is higher than anyone else's should you ever go to place that home on the market. So have at least one bathtub in your house. Now look, I know I say never often and never do this and never do this, but if it's your personal preference, there's nothing wrong with that. This is based on what I've known for decades of selling residential real estate. Builders consult with me, home buyers, homeowners, when they're building houses, and they want to know what do the people want, right? What do the people, so I'm telling you and sharing with you what the what the people actually want, the desirability in a home. For example, galley kitchens, they're not real popular when you have a really closed galley kitchen, especially even if it's just a 1,200 square foot home. My first home had a galley kitchen in it. I didn't realize it. I wish somebody had told me, hey, 
Don't do the galley kitchen, you won't like it as much. I personally am not a big fan of galley kitchens. Most people are not a fan of galley kitchens just for that very reason, they feel kind of closed off. And on the subject of the kitchen, you also want to make sure you do solid surface countertops. What's popular now, you have quartz, you have quartzite, granite is another one that's really popular. So you can do corian, you can do quartz, you can do quartzite, you can do granite, but you want to make sure you do a solid surface countertop in your kitchen and your baths. When it comes to appliances, you want to make sure you do stainless appliances. Always put it in a microwave. It doesn't necessarily have to be over your cooktop range. It can be an oven and a microwave. You also want to make sure you have a dishwasher, stainless steel front, you know, stainless steel on the inside. Spend a little bit more and get a stainless steel dishwasher on the inside, not composite plastic. And when it comes to the sink, you always want to do an undermounted sink. That way it's mounted from underneath and you don't have this metal lip or anything like that on top of the countertop. As far as the faucet, you always wanna do a high arched faucet. And listen, that sink, you wanna make sure it's a single basin sink. If you're ever cleaning or washing off pots, pans, anything that's larger down here in Louisiana, we like to cook gumbo and we like to fry fish and we like to cook, right? In New Orleans, Louisiana. So we like that big sink. And I'm telling you, everybody that has one of those sinks, just a big single basin sink, they absolutely love it. So do a high arch, high arch faucet with a big single basin sink, solid surface countertops. You can do tile backsplash. It's not the end of the world. You don't have to not do tile backsplash. The popular colors for cabinets right now are gray, light gray, off gray, dark gray, any kind of gray, gray, gray. But keep in mind, I always suggest to people, when in doubt, keep it neutral. You want to keep the colors of your house neutral. Have you ever been in these houses that were built back in the 50s and 60s and 70s and I'll call them, they, they just look marvelous because you go in the bathroom and everything's mauve. It's mauve tile, mauve floors. They did tile up the walls that were mauve, the tubs mauve, the commodes mauve, or it's yellow, or it's green, or it's blue. When in doubt, stick with neutral colors, really light earth tones to whites. That way you can bring in the colors through shower curtains, rugs, any kind of decor to really warm it up. And look, there's lots of these. There's no rhyme or reason. There's no right or wrong. These are just tips, tricks, and things that I've learned with decades of selling thousands of homes that I know that people like, that I see in resale. And when you build, you also want to think about how do I like to live, but how would another person like to live? So I hope all of these help you. But I left the most important thing for last, and that is choosing the right builder. If you're not going to act as your own contractor and you're going to hire a builder, you want to make sure that you talk with that builder and ask them questions. How many years have they been in the business? How many houses do they sell? Can you receive a copy of their insurance? Do they have testimonials, reviews? You need to have six or seven reviews. You need to talk to those people. So listen, I hope you enjoyed this video. We're always here to bring helpful tips. Most importantly, enjoy the journey of building a house. It can be a stressful thing, but you just have to know going in what helps with that stress is to make a list of every room. What are you going to do in every room? From floor to ceiling, lighting, plumbing, hardware, electric, absolutely everything before you hire the contractor, have it all in place. Thank you for watching.